In this video, I'm gonna give you overview of construction jobs and opportunity you have in 2023. This is our first video of the year. I know a lot of people are thinking about changing careers or maybe you're already doing your research and thinking about where can you get in maybe you have money to invest maybe you want to buy a business or start a new job this video is for you i'm going to go over three major categories in construction industry i've been in construction for over 17 years i've been here in the specialty trades and i will show you how specialty trades dominate and outperform general contractors here's a few rules for today about my rating the lower the number the higher the rating so number one is good it means it's number one in that category number three means it's uh, compared to other categories it's a third place essentially so one is better than three so the first category here is investment if you're a specialty contractor like i'm talking about painters drywallers carpet installers roofers you need bare minimum so number one here is specialty contractors you you pretty much don't need money if you want to become a mechanical contractor plumber electrician maybe you want to install hvac units you will have to put some money in you will have to be a little bit more financial stable and if you want to become general contractor or remodeler you need a lot of capital i work for a company back in 2000 7 2009 the guy went out of business because he was robbing peter to pay paul you can rob peter to pay paul being a specialty contractor for a while but you cannot do 150 200 000 contractors doing this as a matter of fact we have company here thor contractor in minneapolis one of the biggest firms in town 350 million dollar company a year companies who built u.s stadium and target and they went out of business why because they were robbing peter to pay paul money was not coming in you need a lot of money to build homes to remodel kitchens you can rely on deposits but you will take a lot of risks so this is definitely the loser in this category nobody gonna become a builder who does not have cash in a bank educational requirements same here specialty contractors do not need education you can literally pick a trade and they will teach you how to do the trade you want to install carpet find a carpet installing company someone who does it become his helper apprentice within six months you're going to be a pro and you will get paid to do that you cannot do that you know in in the remodeling world you cannot do it in others you will have to have some education some experience before you start uh, your plumbing business or electrician business as a matter of fact you will have to put years and uh, it goes actually hand in hand with experience you need way more experience to open mechanical contracting shop or a remodeler shop but if you want to be a specialty contractor in most specialty trades you can be in business you can be on the field if you're smart if you're talented if you work hard six months to a year and you can go on your own you learn how to install roofs you learn how to install carpet you learn how to paint walls you can open your own business you cannot do the same as fast and others do so same here experience educational requirements uh specialty trades winning here then we have mechanical contractors and remodelers require way more now patience really big category i want you to think about who you are as a person you know yourself self-reflect because uh it's crucial here uh, you know not every trade is for everyone if you don't have patience with people you can you can be a bricklayer you can install fences you can put a roof on and pretty much not dealing with the customer now if you pick in colors for their walls if you remodel in their kitchen i mean i'm telling you being a general contractor and a remodeler is very tough you have to have a lot of patience for people you will have walls floors countertops covered with the blue tape you will have to explain to people mistakes why your employees don't show up why stuff is happening you have to be yes ma'am yes sir type personality to be in this business not as much in a specialty contractor and not as much as mechanical contractor so ask yourself do you want to deal with people or do you want to deal with materials do you want to work for a store do you want to work for gc a lot of people here in specialty contractors they work for general contractors contractors they work for other companies because you can be uh, very 
successful, let's say carpet installer and take jobs from Home Depot and make 150,000 a year. I have a friend who has paid off house, paid off cars, living a really good life, and he only works for stores. Yes, he talks to homeowners, but his client, his boss is not their client. He just takes orders, go to the house, installs it. If he doesn't like something, he goes to the next job. So it's very important for you to know your level of patience, your level, how much bullshit you can take from people. Some people are very hard to please and you have to know yourself before you get in the trades. It will even vary within the category. So specialty trade contractors are different, like the same as mechanical contractors. Being in plumbing is a little bit different than being an electrician. So analyze the trade, talk to people, maybe join the Facebook group and see what kind of problems they have. Uh, because if you're not willing, if it's not, uh, within your trades to deal with those kind of problems, don't get into it. Like for example, being a roofer and being a flooring guy is two different uh, trades when it comes to customer service. Being a floor guy, you have to get used to people watching your back. I used to install harder floors. And I remember, like I'll give you one example. I had this one guy who had been watching me all day installing the floors. He named boards. So it was laminate floors and he was naming each board and he was telling me what to install. Like next one is going to be tiger paw. This one is going to be, you know, let's go with the plane. Do you, uh, next one is going to be that sandy one. So he named types of boards uh, within laminate boxes and he was telling me what to install. I'm telling you, my helper that day was ready to kill that guy. He's like, how can you take this much crap? You know, someone staring at your ass all day long and telling you what to do. But guess what? It doesn't happen on the roof. It doesn't happen when you build fences. So you have to know yourself. I'm a people pleaser. You know, I'm a yes ma'am, yes sir when it comes to customer service and that's okay for me. But if you don't have that patience, pick another trade. Now let's talk about earning potential. Category why you probably click on this video. Let me tell you this, that in my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, this is the most profitable category of all. I have seen more millionaires and more people who've sold their businesses in this category than any other categories. I did put number one mechanical contractors because they do have higher tickets. I mean, if you're an electrician, you're getting paid hundred bucks an hour, you have less competition. So it's, it, it is easier to make more money being a mechanical contractor if you are established and you're experienced. No questions about it. But this category, uh, has more millionaires and more profit than others. Let me explain. On our channel, two years ago, we published an interview with Mike Brown. He is a gutter installer in Minnesota, 28 year old, who sold his company, gutter company, for $1.8 million. Builders, general contractors, don't have stories like that. You can build amazing trade business and by the age of 25, 30, sell it. If you have a trade, if you have good service, you can scale it. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of our partners on this channel, a company called Raindrop, just small product. You can uh, buy it for like $3 a foot. You can take that product and you can offer service as a specialty contractor, you know, and pretty much specialize in, in gutter cover installation. We just did an interview with Brent Siemens out of Tennessee. He installs it for like $18 a foot. You can do a million dollar a year installing $3 a foot product. I mean, you're probably gonna be making $4 per foot. So per day, you only need to install 200 feet to make 800 bucks a day. If you do it 250 uh, days a year, think about how much money you can make. You can make a couple hundred thousand dollars installing strip of plastic on top of gutters. This is what I'm talking about. When it comes to earning potential, this is the uh, pr most profitable category. You can be a painter, you can be a drywall installer, and you can scale it. Builders will hire you, stores will hire you, homeowners will hire you. You specialize in one trade, you don't need education, there's not a lot of competition and you can make a lot of money and even sell the business later. When it comes to remodeling and building homes, you're gonna be taking a lot of risk, 
you might have a good payday, but profit margins in remodeling are the lowest of the three categories. I know remodelers who make three to 5% net profit. You know, when here you're talking about 10 to 20%, 10 to 20%, here three to 5%, very low margin, high risk. And let's talk about risk, risk factors. The highest risk are builders and remodelers. In a good economy, they build homes, they're probably gonna make a lot of money. I know more contractors, general contractors, remodelers going out of business than any other category. You're not gonna see drywall installer or gutter installer filing bankruptcy as often as builders who get affected by uh, slow market or factors out of his control. Couple mistakes here will put you out of business. Competition, on my list, mechanical contractors have least amount of competition because it's very hard to get in. Nobody can become a plumber overnight. You have to spend five, six years or years to become HVAC contractor, electrician, or plumber, where here, low cost entry, that's why we have too many roofers, too many flooring guys, and too many chucks in the trucks, because it does not cost a lot to, to become one. And of course, it's the hardest to become general contractor. You have to have a uh, license, you have to be good with the paperwork, and you have to be good with the financing. And the last one, scalability. You start a business, you wanna grow it. What's the easiest thing to grow? If you're specialty contractor, so let's say you wanna install windows, you can be a window installer in your town, become really good or gutter installer, floor installer, and you can build that franchise, you can open new locations. That's why we see roofing companies in six states. That's why you know, we see specialty contractors are growing. You can definitely do it with mechanical contractors as well, uh, remodelers. <laughs> It's very hard to scale, let me put it that way. There are so many basements that you can finish per year. There's so many homes you can build. Of course, we do have national builders, but those are exception of the rule and most contractors cannot scale or have hard time to scale. So let's summarize it. Uh, the way it works, the lower the number, the higher the rating. So pretty much because we have all number one places here, 10 is the winner, 24 is the loser. So specialty trade contractors gets 10 points, mechanical contractors get 14, general contractors and remodelers get 24 points. Now, if I would start a business today, I definitely would be here because this is my area of expertise. This is what I know, this is what I do. It's easy for me to, I don't care what to do, to be honest with you. If I move into Alaska tomorrow and I see that there's no drywall installers, I'm gonna become drywall installer, build business around it, start hanging drywall myself, hire a few helpers, build number one drywall company in Alaska. It doesn't matter. Like that's what I did in 2013. I moved to Minneapolis in Atlanta. I was a flooring installer in Minneapolis. I become uh, a roofing contractor. Business is the business. If you understand the business, what trade to be in the business, doesn't matter. You just have to look at the demand. You have to look what's missing and you have to look at the weather and other opportunities. Like for example, if you wanna be pool contractor, don't be a pool contractor in Minnesota. Go to Arizona or California when there is big demand for pools. You get the idea. You know, if you wanna install gutter covers, go where it rains a lot and there's a lot of trees. I don't know, Seattle maybe. If you wanna be in the roof cleaning business, Seattle also gonna be a really good market because there's a lot of algae and there's a lot of uh, roofs. and you know, they all look like crap, so you, they need to be cleaned. Pick the market that fits you, have high demand, and you know you can scale. Comment below what you think about my breakdown. If you know someone who is killing it in his trade, I wanna know how much they're making and what market they are. And in your opinion, you know, where I'm wrong. Who makes the most money in construction? I read all my comments and maybe I'll consider your comments and your feedback when I'll make another video a year later on this topic. My name is Dmitry Lipinski. If this video brought any value to you, consider subscribing, like this video, it truly helps. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy New Year.